welcome back to a brand new episode of Social Life right here on Rogers TV. This is our first episode of the new year, so happy 2020. We're your hosts, Ksenia Spock. And I'm Stephanie Larrero. We talk about all things trending. I'm excited for a new show and a new year. That's right, and we're going to kick things off with a bang. I am sure this next topic we're going to talk about made everybody at home super happy. Canada won gold at the World Juniors in yes. Czech Republic against Russia. It easily became one of the best games in the history of the tournament. Did you watch the game? I did. It was so exciting. I was so happy they won. See, for me, this game oh. <laughs> is a little tough because... You know, I live in Canada, and I've been living in Canada my whole life, but I'm also Russian, so it's like my two families are battling it out. And, just, you know, I'm cheering for one, but then the other one scores, and it's like, what do I do? Who do I go for? But, you know, in the end, I'm always happy because Russia wins. I'm happy. Canada wins. I'm happy. So, really, it was a win -win I'm the lucky you. one. It's a yeah. win for me. So let's kind of talk about the, some of the highlights of the game. So earlier on, actually, a long time ago, um, Russia defeated Canada 6-0 in the tournament. So this game, everybody Everybody was looking forward to it, so the game had a lot of back and forth. So in the second period, Denisenko, he managed to break the tie between both countries. Russia led 2-1 and then 3-1 in the second period. Here it is. Oh. There it is. Oh, and look at that goal by Denisenko. Oh, yeah, everybody was cheering, I'm sure. He's not so happy. <laughs> a lot of Canadians were not, but it's okay because you know what? In the middle of the third period, let, I don't know if we can bring up the, net, the video where we see the captain oh. of the team. He manages to score the goal. There it is. Oh, oh. boom. Tied both Russia and Canada. 3-3. <laughs> three, three. Now, really, here, it's anybody's game. It's third period. Everybody's on the edge of their seats. I know at home. I, know, I could this not. This was very exciting. I could not, like, sit on. We were, we were lying in, in bed, and I had to get up. Like, <laughs> I cannot sit still. And with about four minutes left to the end of the third period, Akil Thomas. Okay, this is his first goal of the tournament, and it is the best goal you can get because look at that. Let's take a look. Look, look, look. Oh! Oh! There it is. Everybody is so happy. This is his first goal. I know he's been going hard at it. He, you know, yeah, he's been wanting to for play him. forever. Yep. His mom, I know she was super proud. Everybody's super proud. So Canada took that game. Yep. Is it any surprise, though? We're a pretty good team. I know, yeah. And I've yeah, I know it's a pretty good team, and I feel like every year or every time it's like it's either Russia or Canada when they play together, yep. you know, but Canada had a great comeback. We took it. We took it, yep. Now let's see what's trending in news. So less of a celebratory occasion here, but Australia, as we all probably know by now, at the beginning of the month and a little bit at the end of December, um, they've been experiencing some bushfires. Right. And they've now spread throughout the country. The worst state that's effective is New South Wales. So there are, there are over 1,300 houses and a lot of people are forced to evacuate. Oh my god! A lot of animals are being affected. Their homes are being destroyed. Oh, this is terrible. So it's Just very looking sad. at this video. There's some video footage there, so you can understand. Oh. The temperatures across the continent have been above 40 degrees Celsius. That's insane. So extreme temperatures and very high winds, so that caused the fires to spread pretty quickly, and that's why they're in this kind of state of emergency now. Um, you could, there's lots of ways to donate, guys, so like, get online if you really want to help. I know we're far away, but there's still lots of ways to help because of the internet. Yeah, and I feel like Canada is doing a really good job, too. We're sending a lot of people there to go out and help. So if there's any way you can donate and help, we got to do it because it's crazy what's happening. I know, it's so sad. They had some rain, so that was helpful, but people are saying that by the end of the week, there's going to be more fires and it's going to start up again. Okay, well, speaking about forests, you know what? We have a startup here in Toronto. It is called Flash Forest, and they're actually pursuing innovative ways to combat climate change. And a big thing is they are trying to plant trees all over the country. Uh, so Flash Forest was founded last spring, and they just came on Kickstarter in December of 2019 with a goal to use drones. To use drones. That's crazy. To plant seeds in order to offset our carbon footprint. Man. So how it works is that these drones, um, they would fire nutrient-packed pods into the soil at an optimal depth for growth. 
and they estimate that one drone can actually plant up to 20,000 trees in one day. Oh my goodness. In one day. So that's 10 that's times crazy. the speed of a human planter. Oh my gosh. Have they, have they been able to do this so, yet? Or is this just like... Um, so, so far, they have planted a bit over 3,000 seed pods in southern Ontario in a test phase, but they're hoping to reach international level. Now, the cool part is that by 2028, this could amount to 1 billion new trees. Wow. And why are they doing this? Well... Their primary goal isn't only to grow more trees, but they also want to increase biodiversity, right? They want to, you know, rebuild ecosystems um, with a variety of different tree species and soil enriching ingredients. And they want to prevent cat like catastrophes, what's happening in Australia, yeah, right? This would with be amazing if you could replant all those trees that they lost so quickly. Right? So they're here in Toronto. They have already exceeded their goal of $10,000 by $60,000, and they're aiming to raise $100,000 by January 19th. So if you go online, you type in Flash Forest, you can find our Kickstarter. If you want to donate, you can do that. Let's plant some trees. Let's save our planet. Exactly. Um, and right now, let's take a look at what's trending in tech. Hey, Social Life. My name is Sanjula, your tech correspondent. Today, we had the Google Home Mini as well as the Google Nest Mini. We're going to figure out, compare them, and see what the differences are. And is it better to pay $30 more to get the Nest Mini, or should you just stick to the Google Home Mini? Let's find out. <laughs> Inside the box comes the Google Home Mini itself. As you can see, you got a red velvet bottom to it. It's got the mute switch as well as a micro USB port. Inside the box, we have a quick start guide as well as a charger. The charger is currently not in the box because I already took it out, but that's pretty much everything that comes in the box. So putting the Google Home Mini to the side, we have the new Nest Mini and let's unbox this. So I got my trusty knife right here. Let's just crack right into it. It's a very Apple-like box. Opening it up, inside we have the Google Nest Mini. Difference here, as you can see, from the Google Home Mini, it doesn't have that red bottom. And it actually has a hook, and you can actually mount it to a wall, which is pretty sick. And then the charge port's also a little different, so it uses a proprietary charge port versus the universal micro USB. And first impressions-wise, they feel about the same. Honestly, looking at it like this, you can't really tell a difference but they feel exactly the same. Inside the box, we have the proprietary charger, as well as that same, let's get started, quick start guide. So as far as the unboxing goes, that is pretty much it. These are the two products. Let's get them set up and see how they sound. So it's been really only a day that I got to play around with these devices and first impressions base wise, uh, I don't really feel a need to upgrade to the Google Home or the Google Nest Mini, sorry, over the Google Home Mini. I think you can save yourself a couple bucks and get the Google Home Mini versus the newer second generation Nest Mini. But hey, I've only had a couple hours to play around with the devices. First impressions based wise, I feel like you don't need to upgrade to the Nest Mini, but hey, my opinions might change. Overall, they're both great devices and I highly recommend picking either of them up. They're really amazing and they're so useful and I use my Google Home Mini every single day and I'm probably gonna start using the Nest Mini 2 now every single day. With that being said, that was my first impressions and unboxing of the Google Home Mini versus the Google Nest Mini. Later on, I will give a full review of both devices and see which one is ultimately better. But for now, save yourself some bucks and get the Google Home Mini. Thank you for watching. And that was our tech correspondent, San Jula. I love the Google Home Mini. I don't have it, but I know it's so much fun. I love to play it when I go to my friend's house. But speaking of something else that's super fun, and it's been taken over social media by storm, it's TikTok. Yep. I know, Steph, you have TikTok. I have TikTok. I didn't want to make it for so long. I feel too old to be on TikTok, but I broke down and I made it and I watch it every day. I think it's so entertaining. I haven't posted any of myself yet. My friends posted some on my behalf, but it's right. another story. So for those of uh, you who don't know what TikTok is, it is basically an app where you can post videos like the ones we're seeing. So this is the very popular uh, Doja Cat, why don't you say so video. So everybody, you know, you post like it's like about 15 seconds, you dance, you can lip sync to it, and you can go, you can go viral with this app. So it's really popular among Gen Z. Um, so right now, this app has over 1 billion all-time downloads, and its popularity wow. only continues to grow. Now, I didn't know this. 
So it's owned by a Chinese company called ByteDance, and it's worth over 75 million right now. So if you need to invest, I would invest, invest in, in TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> okay? So in September 2016, ByteDance actually launched a short video app called Douyin, and within a year, this app skyrocketed. So it's very only popular in China. It got 100 million users, 1 billion video views per day. So the company thought, hmm, let's expand into the international market and call it TikTok. Now, at the same time, in the U.S., Musical.ly. Have you heard of Musical.ly? Yes, I did. So can you tell people what it is? Do you know what it is? Musical.ly is a similar concept. It's short videos, and but most of it was lip-syncing videos, I believe. Exactly. So that was huge in the U.S. So then TikTok, so that company, they bought Musical.ly, and they combined Musical.ly and TikTok into one app. So now you can do the same thing, but on TikTok, and it blew up, all right? So it it even helped launch like famous celebrities like Lil Nas X with Old Town Road. Okay, everybody took that song. They were posting bites yep. on it. Boom, it blew up. Um, I know you can also post some memes. So I feel like we have a clip of a really funny meme that you can post, which I thought was funny. So it's not only for like lip syncing. There it is. So it's stuff like this, you know, how this normal, normal people tell stories versus how I tell <laughs> stories. And I feel like everybody can relate to this. Yeah, I love I like this app because it's so versatile. So if you wanna if you wanna do a lip sync video, you can do that. If you wanna dance on TikTok, you can do that. You can make these funny memes. You can post pictures of your dog. Like there's so many different trends that you can follow. There's something for everything. And Everybody. right now, currently, the most famous TikTok star is the one and only Lauren Gray. She's oh. only 17 years old. Okay, she's younger than us. She was popular on Musically too, right? See, yeah, yeah, that's where she first got her start. Musically, she has now over 33 million followers Crazy. so that doesn't make you download tiktok yeah and anyone can become famous on tiktok guys right start making videos so why don't you say so i don't even know the dance but you know what <laughs> one day we're gonna learn it and we'll do it we're right gonna here. make our own tiktoks right here and speaking of famous something else happened in the entertainment world yes that's right my favorite rachel bilson who was on the oc which i'm an og I love the OC. OG OC fan OG OC fan right here she started dating bill Hader from snl Okay. So some people say this is an unusual pairing, but he's super he's super funny. So I could see it happening. You know, I could see her liking like a really funny guy. Okay. Um, they're officially dating. It was just rumors before. They were seen together in his hometown of Tulsa, Oklahoma, having coffee. So there was a lot of speculation. Uh, but now they made their red carpet debut. They were at the Golden Globes. Aw. Yeah, they looked really cute together, actually. Uh, there's some pictures we have also. There, there they, they are. are. Super cute. They walked Aww. the carpet together and they were seen like inside all night just hanging out. So it was a little date night. It was really nice. Um, so interestingly enough, if you don't know how they met, they were on this movie called The To-Do List. Okay. It was made in 2013 and it's kind of like a cult classic. So it's like seven years ago. Yeah, a long time ago. It's like it's like a Mean Girls or like a Clueless. It's one of those cult classic 2000s films. Um, and his ex-wife actually was the director. Oh! I know. Oh, so oh it's wow. Kind of interesting, right? It is. They were together for a really long time, though. He was married for over 10 years, and so was she. They both have kids. And, and so I they guess met each other, and now it was they're, just love. they're reuniting, and there's love. There we go. So, so I think it's super cute. Oh, well, I'm very happy that they're together. They seem super cute. Well, you know. It's just the beginning of 2020, but I do hope so we'll they last. I hope they last too. I know, but guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right, we're coming right back. We're going to be talking with Matthew Muzaffari, founder of Spear, about a new app that is going to take over. Stay tuned. Social Life, everyone. We are joined with a very special guest on the couch today, Matthew Mazafari. He's just 22 years old, and he founded his own startup company that aims to reframe the future, and he has a brand new app pod that he's going to share with us that helps university students stay safe on campus. Welcome, Matthew. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. So Thanks you, for being here. So sorry to cut you off, but you just came off a really big year, and you've been recognized as Canada's top 30 developers developers under 30. How does that feel? Congratulations, by the way. Thanks so much. It's, it's really humbling, and it's still surreal to me even after a couple months I think it just really inspired me to keep progressing and working in this STEM industry I always see people on social media winning these crazy awards and always thinking I, I want to do something like that that would be crazy to get recognized for work and getting to that point is very surreal and it proves to me that anyone can do it 
Yeah, that's amazing. It's so great to be recognized so young. Um, and tell us a little bit about your company, Spear. Yeah, so Spear is a technology hub. We essentially help companies, individuals, and startups build out and design their own technologies. Okay, so Pod, that is the latest app that you are releasing. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah. So Pod is an application which provides live reporting for universities and college campuses across Canada. Pod is a spin-off of the words peas in a pod, and the whole theme behind Pod is to encourage community involvement and just overall community awareness. And obviously we're all students, but what specifically inspired you to create this app? What inspired me happened over two years ago. This was an application I built out a competition uh, with some friends for the Toronto Police. And after that, the project just paused and I was inspired because of recent events that happened on campus with different students. And it kind of motivated me to release the app um, for college and university campuses. And can you tell us what kind of universities are, you know, can you use this app? Or is it all universities or it's GTA? So we're actually releasing a new update in the next couple of days which provides support for 25 college and university campuses. So this includes the major ones like Ryerson, York, U of T, um, uh, colleges like Seneca, Humber, um, George Brown. It, it contains a wide variety of schools. And, and what are some of the key features of the app? I think some of the key features includes, like, obviously the live reporting. So being able to um, receive a snapshot at any point in the day or night of how your school is doing in terms of security is very important. Something else that's of value is the shaking to call feature. So if you're ever on the app and you notice something, you can shake your phone and it instantly calls the, your local campus security. No, that's so, amazing. so should you be on the app in order to shake it? You right? need to be you on, be the, on app the app to, in order to shake it. Um, I, I think something that I really like from this application is um, the way we collect data. So after a certain number of reports have been placed, you can actually uh, see a certain or, or an average time that reports are placed so students can be more informed and have a transparent view of their campus. That's awesome. And how is this going to keep students safer than the systems that universities already have in place? I've, I've done lots of research on this. POD is definitely excelling in terms of the reporting and transparency. It makes sense for institutions to uh, not want to provide all the information related to uh, security incidents on their campus due to um, dif different factors. But with POD, just because you can view everything, that's already a different snapshot and a different perspective on campus security. And I think this app is fantastic because we used to be Ryerson students and we were in the downtown core and anything can happen there. And even sometimes walking on campus, you know, late at night, it, it's a little creepy, especially, you know, being a female. I get a little bit scared. So I think this yeah. app is fantastic. But say your university or your, or your uh, college is not on this app, how can they get added or how can they request this app to be featured on their campus? Yeah, so it's very easy. You can actually just download the app and you can swipe on the screen and you'll notice it says pretty instantly request a campus. It's very obvious in yellow. You click that, you can instantly submit a form that allows you to request the school. That's great. So there'll be all universities around Toronto and maybe Canada using the app pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. We're planning to expand globally as well. It's very easy to scale with this type of product. And I definitely want to make sure everyone is safe on all campuses in every part of the world. And Pod is available on both Android and iOS. So regardless what kind of phone you have, you can get it. And if you got a great uh, idea for an app or you're looking to revamp your business's online presence, visit www.spear.io to find out how you can work with Matthew and his team. Matthew, thank you so much Thanks for coming so much for and talking me. to us. Thanks thank a you. Lot. We love this app. But now. We're going to take things over to the entertainment world. All right, the beginning of 2020 marks one of my favorite shows. Mine too. The Bachelor. Yep. And this year... We got Peter Weber. He is the 28-year-old Delta Airlines pilot. He finished third in Hannah's season. So he was the one that was chosen. A lot of people were a little bit iffy about him. Do you like Peter? What do you think about Peter? I love Peter. I would have been super happy with Mike as well. But I'm, I'm happy for Peter. You know, I think he's super cute. He's super nice. He's got a great job, which a lot of the time, you know, these guys come on here and they're social media oh, influencers. There he is. 
That's just a little preview of what this season is going to hold. I think Peter is such a cutie. I really hope he finds love. Me too. So the first episode aired January 6th for three Hours. It was a total of three hours. That is so long, but you know why? They decided to do things a little bit differently. Not only did we meet the ladies that came out of the limos, but we also saw the first dates and a dramatic ending. So I thought Peter had so many nice girls who were all dressed so well, but my favorite was Lauren. Now, I want to pull up a picture of Lauren because I loved her outfit. She there so it good. is. She was, I think she's the only contestant I've ever seen that did not come in a dress. I know. I loved it. Girl power. She wanted to stand out and make an impression, and she did. Like, she, look at that outfit. That's fire, Lauren. Good she job. She slayed. She did. And, Steph, who did you like the most? Or, like, who did you connect with or thought was kind of cool? I like Kelly. Because Kelly. <laughs> I, think it's, <laughs> I think it's interesting that her and Peter actually met before. At the same hotel where they filmed the first episode. You are right. I think all the girls, they when they found out, they already got a little crazy. Yeah, you could see you could see the psycho coming out a little bit, but that's fine. She's she's confident, she's ready for it, and she felt a connection, and so did he. He said that when he gave her the impression rose at the end of the first date. Yeah, and they even shared a very steamy kiss. Like he that's picked right, her up, did. put her on the bar, and it got a little it got out a little of hand. Crazy. So maybe she can be, you know, there she is right there. I don't know. Will she go to the end? We'll see. But definitely that connection. I think knowing, him knowing her definitely gives her a little bit of an advantage yeah. against the other I girls. Think so too. Okay, but I really want to get to Hannah, okay? Yeah. So when all the girls are coming out of the limo, the d a limo pulls up. And it's the one and only Hannah B. Miss Hannah Brown. So Hannah Brown was actually the contestant. Sorry, not the contestant. She was the bachelor right there. She is look at his face. He I'm is shocked. so surprised. So everybody's thinking, oh my gosh, Hannah's here. Why did she come? Does she want to be on the show? Is she trying to win Peter over? Well, I found this so cute, actually. Yeah, she, I thought it was really cute too. She came to talk to him and she gave him, uh, he gave her. Was it, a, uh, it was like airplane wings or something? Airplane yeah. wings, right. And he gave those to her. When on her he, season. On her season, yeah, for them to find love because he was a pilot. And now she's returning the wings to him so he can find his true love. That's I thought that was cute. so cute. But then at the end of the episode, I thought, okay, her motives might have been a little less like genuine. Go ahead, buddy, find love. Right. Because what happened is we're, out, we're going to the group dates. And all of a sudden, Miss Hannah Brown is standing there. And I thought that this part, okay, it was a little bit awkward, it was awkward. and kind of cringeworthy because she starts telling about the first time they got intimate in front of a group of women that he's dating. Yeah, it was very, it was very strange. I don't know, producer, interesting call. So it's like ex-girlfriend telling future girlfriends. And so while the women have time to prepare, because now the women have to share their intimate stories. Hannah's talking to Peter. We can see it right here. And she's saying that she still has feelings for him. And he, too. Like, what did you think of that? I, it was a really, like, I thought it was a, it's, the conversation seemed very real and genuine. I don't know how real and genuine the show is, but it seemed like it to me. Um, I felt bad for both of them. Uh, they mentioned that they didn't actually reach out to each other after the show, after Hannah's season, even though she did talk to Tyler afterwards, and obviously Jed she picked. Um, so he said he didn't want to feel like a third choice. I felt so bad for him for that. And then she's coming in here again. So I definitely feel more for Peter than for Hannah, even though I love Hannah. Right. So and we left on a cliffhanger to be continued, so we don't know. Is Peter going to ask her to come back? Is she going to go? How are the girls going to react? We are going to have to find out in the later episodes, but yep. I love The Bachelor. I'm so happy it's back on our TV screens. Me too, but you know what? Something else that's trending in entertainment right now is the Golden Globes. <gasps> you are right. It, they happened earlier on in January. Yes, they did. And we're not going to talk exactly about the highlights because I'm sure everyone knows about that already. What we're going to talk about is the fashion. We love fashion. We do. So it's time. It's fashion time, guys. <laughs> now let's take a look at some amazing outfits that the ladies wore on the red carpet this year. <gasps> Ooh, first we have Joey King. She's been put on a lot of best dressed lists. She's wearing designer Iris Van Herpen. It's a very interesting design. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting. It's like uh, an optical illusion. Do you like it or no? Uh, it's a, you know what? It's it, it fits her, it suits her. She looks gorgeous. Uh, but it, the dress itself, I think it's okay. I like it. I think it's a it's a bit of a risk, but still very tasteful. 
Here's the next oh, one here. I love this dress. Sorry, I love red because I'm wearing red today. So I love red. I love that dress. She looks fantastic. That's Scarlett Johansson. I know. I love that one too. It's so pretty. If I was gonna win a Golden Globe, this is one of the ones <laughs> I would pick, guys. Let's see the next one. This one's also one of my favorite. This is Renee <gasps> Zellweger. What oh, do you think? she's so classy. I, I love know. that color on her. I love the the slit. Me too. Thigh high. It's simple yet elegant with a little thigh high split. She's looking gorgeous. Yeah, she looks beautiful. I love that. This one. Oh, that's Taylor love, Swift, right? Yeah, it's Taylor Swift. I love the shape. Oh. I think it looks good on her, but the pattern is so ugly. I'm really yeah, sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, oh, I, yeah, I do not like the pattern. I'm sorry, Taylor like Swift, but. But yeah. And this 2K, I love JLo. She's a queen. But I don't know how I feel about this dress. The bow. Mm, I know. I, I feel like she's worn better outfits. Me too. I Yeah, I don't, I don't think I like this one, unfortunately. I love JLo, though. The last one. Okay, yeah. I love green. I love green. It's a great color, but I don't know. Charlize. It's Dior. Dior is one of my favorite designers, I think, high-end designers. I love what they do. It's very simple, but unfortunately, she missed it for me. That's right. Well, thanks for giving us all those highlights, and thank you, everybody, for watching. But before we go, we got to give a major shout-out to our sponsor, for our set sponsor, Niche Decor, for their wonderful accessories. They have two unique showrooms in Newmarket and Aurora with all furniture and decor needs. Check out their website, nichedecor.ca, or their social media pages at niche underscore decor on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching The Social Life right here on Rogers TV. See you next time. Bye. One, two, three.